What a little bit of Texas Friday right weekend. How you doing? <laughs> it's nice and early, not too early, but it's uh, certainly time to get going because I do like this new home of Texas Friday. It's pretty cool, right? <laughs> At least we got a little bit more space. We can do this without running into people. That's nice. All right, so I know you guys are here for a few very special guests. My personal favorite horror movie, the original Halloween. Yes. So this one, we have the ladies of Halloween here. And let's bring them up. Nancy Lewis and PJ Souls, everybody. Big round of so much that is that has been said about it and there's so many uh, questions that have been answered and I know people out here have a lot of uh, questions but let's uh, uh, you know there, there's so many fond memories that we have watching Halloween but actually making it you know it was a special set because you didn't know that it was going to be the huge hit that it was going to be and so it's a very much a uh, family style set and, you know, everybody was helping out with different things. Do you have a particular memory that stands out to each of you while you're on set? It was just you're looking around the set going, I'm always going to remember this. I don't think we thought of it in those terms. At least <laughs> I did as a young actress. I was like, I hope I remember my lines. I, I hope I uh, look at my hair looks good. <laughs> Hope Bob doesn't rip my blouse. <laughs> I hope I can say totally for the tenth time. <laughs> but what does stand out in terms of helping, and uh, in terms of the everyone helping out, was the look the leaves, like picking up the leaves. I just always remember right. ever say, "Come on, everybody, PJ, get over here! Come on, we gotta get the leaves." And, you know, we bought them for them. <laughs> right. So that yeah. was one of the Well, because we were making the movie in April. And it was California. There's a palm tree or two that you guys spot. I know that. That's, that's called independent filmmaking and using film. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and and of course, um, you know, we we had a few different people in the Michael Myers mask because at the time it just wasn't really uh, a thing as far as. It was whoever was kind of staying right. there, right? Yeah, like me. From my savings, yeah. Yeah, hanging, hanging around. Um, yeah, because Nick really just came down to watch his friend John direct a movie, right? Get right. some tips. He wasn't hired or he wasn't on the payroll, I don't think. Now oh. he is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, he was, he was just there kind of, you know, to lend support. Yeah, Little exactly. You know. <laughs> And to see him, and I think Tommy went down to do something because he wasn't available for the scene where he comes in and has the sheet over. So John said, "Hey, can you put the sheet on, Nick, and just come in here?" And so that was Nick Castle under the sheet. So <laughs> that how it just happened that way. It wasn't an assigned role. You know. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's so wild to think about, right? I just got like, all right, you're standing here. Come on, bro. put the sheet over. Well, that's the magic of these kind of movies, that, that especially since this one has been such a long-lasting, uh, you know, when they're a labor of love, then uh, they can last a long time. <coughs> they are very special. And the conception, you know, the authenticity and the, the, the uniqueness of it, and the fact that everybody loved, you know, making this movie, it's the spirit, and that's what's been carried over. Guys got it! Yeah. <laughs> By the way, show of hands, how many people, when you just happen to say totally to something, <laughs> think of this movie, right? Yeah. Me! 
Did you see her shirt? Look at that. So, you guys see one Well, good. Well, you know what I love about this convention is there's so many passionate fans that have so many great questions. And so I'm not going to take up the time. Let's, let's see who's got other great questions for us. All right, right here in the front. Uh, since it's been so long, uh, have you guys been able to... Not that long. You guys are so old now. <laughs> Reconnect with uh, John Carpenter at all? Um, Reconnect so with John Carpenter. Um, I'm going to get in this line. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to think good thoughts for John and, and hope his arm holds up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you see people, like people say, have you seen Jamie Lee? You know, uh, if, if she walked in right now, she'd come up to both of us and we'd hug and there'd be tears. Right. And, you know, she'd probably use the F word. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, and John, you know, we've seen him through the years. <laughs> There's always a hug and a smile, and you know, we look at each other like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> we survived. We survived. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I, I saw him. I hope to see him now. Okay. Totally we'll sure. get a minute to give him a hug. Yay. <laughs> Hi, Sideshow, what's your favorite kills? Oh, definitely Bob in the kitchen. <laughs> I love the toes. <laughs> And I've done a bunch of conventions with John Michael Graham, and he, uh, he's just great. I love him. Although he did stop acting after our, the one the one film that he did, which was ours, but he continued acting, I guess, in Disney Disney World in Orlando. So. That's interesting. I didn't know that. And how about for you? What was your favorite show besides your own? Besides my own. <laughs> Yours was pretty great, though. It was. You got the windows all steamed up. In the yeah. <laughs> Great to have you on an action figure. <laughs> uh, right up here. Hi. Um, I told you 
City has today. You've been in three of my favorite movies, and you were in all three of me. I have two questions. Have you ever had anyone in all these years tell you they stopped babysitting because of Halloween? <laughs> <laughs> like people stopped swimming in the ocean after Jaws? And what is your each favorite memory from the filming of Halloween? Let me uh, repeat that. So, um, so uh, what was the favorite memory from Does anyone ever stop babysitting? Stop babysitting. Who told you that, that you <laughs> scared them from, or, you know, in all these years? And what's your favorite memory from the, your time filming the movie? <laughs> um, well, I remember when my daughter started babysitting, I didn't even think about it, but I guess I, I, I just think of it as a movie, <laughs> but, uh, luckily. Uh, and yes, yeah, so I, I might have thought differently if she was babysitting around Halloween. <laughs> um, yeah, and I guess my favorite memory, um, I mean, there's a few. I, I do really remember the lunches. I remember that we used to sit with Donald Pleasance, and the three of us would be giggling and laughing, having a good time, and Donald Pleasance was just sitting there quietly <laughs> having his sandwich. And I think we tried a few times to engage with him, but he was very quiet. And I remember John told me that he likes to stay in character, so try not to disturb him. So after that, I was like, oh, wow. That's interesting approach. I don't, I don't know if I'd want to do that because I like to have a little bit of a good time and relax and get to know everybody. So I thought that, I thought that was, if that's his method, that that was interesting. <laughs> and I just also remember Deborah and John, um, I thought, I, mean, I guess I was wrong, but wow, they were, they were the ultimate Hollywood couple because you know, they both write the script, they're producing it, he's directing it, she's always whispering in his ear. Um, there was just such a good couple, you know. But you know, it turned out it was more of a business relationship. But I was I was really inspired by the fact that they were you know, a Hollywood couple. So. Yeah, I I think just in general it was fun to show up on the set because the set had such a great atmosphere yeah. generally. You know there. We, I had made another film previous to, to Halloween with, with John, um, Assault on Precinct 13. Yeah. And, and, and that, that movie was stressful um, because that, that movie was made for $70,000 or something, and it's a ridiculously low amount of money. And so, you know, it's going to be one take for every scene, and that was pretty much it. And John was um, <laughs> so on it, you know, it, everything was so carefully planned out, and it was right. the first time he'd shot and managed. But when we got to Halloween, he had like three times as much money, so right away it was more chill, right? And um, a, a longer shooting schedule, and, and, yeah. and more. 21 days. <laughs> and and uh, so, I don't know, and, and it was just a in my mind, it, it was a better script because it was about babysitters. <laughs> and and um, I don't know, it was just it was just a lot of fun yeah, in general really to show up and see, well, what's gonna happen today? Well, we're gonna need all these leaves and we're gonna need some rotten pumpkins. And, and you know, we're making stuff up. How, what's the best way to make this as scary as possible? And, and it's fun to try to dream up ways to scare people. Yeah, creative. Right? Yeah. And yeah. So I don't know that I have a favorite memory. I remember hanging around in the neighbor chair with me and Jamie and just right. you know, semi rehearsing sort of not rehearsing just hanging around. Well, well trying to be the teenage high school buddy yeah. at work. So, so we older. were trying to stay in we're character. Like 10 years older than Jamie. So right. That was when she was 19 and this was her first movie. Right. And she was very nervous, even though she was really fun and healthy, but she was... Okay, so, so don't you think we were trying to stay in character too as much as Donald Pleasance was trying to stay in his well, character? Well, maybe, but we were trying to become our characters. <laughs> We already were married. And <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah. It's hard to get back to high school in our brains. But <laughs> right. Jamie had just recently come from there, so. Yeah. But, 
So when it became a thing. It was easy. <laughs> it was an instant. Oh, we had an instant camaraderie. Yeah, it was fun. That's why all three of our characters were so different. So, and I remember Jamie just always kept saying she wished that she could play Linda. And I said, well, I'm not tracing because Lori's boring. <laughs> So when it became a big hit, uh, did, did your, you know, this is pre-social media, but did your live streams live, people recognize you? And, no, it was a slow burn, and I didn't get it. It wasn't popular until now. <laughs> <laughs> it really was until the internet, yeah. until, until everybody had a personal computer and could, could communicate with each other on the web. Then yeah. it became uh, a whole different I scene. Mean, it wasn't like overnight or even a year or two. I mean, it really took a long time. <laughs> I never even used to mention it when I'd go on auditions. It wasn't something you know, that I would say. Or, or maybe the casting person would know. But back then, it was a back of credits, and you compiled a, a small little you know, reel of some of your top scenes, and I don't think that was even in it, because it was this little unknown horror movie. <laughs> That's so wild to think. I, mean, I liked it. I thought it was cool. but. <laughs> Are in the purple shirt. And then I think also the, the holiday became more popular. <laughs> really, it's like it's more popular than Christmas. I think people just love Halloween. I mean, have you look how many of you are here just for a panel with the, the two of us. It's just amazing. So I think uh, the, the Halloween, the uh, holiday, put Halloween on the uh, on the map, and vice versa. So. And like Nancy said, that you can see it now everywhere. There's new streaming platforms and. You can download it. You don't have to go out to Blockbuster. You know, go to the Mountain Theater. You can see it anytime. So it's really cool. Well, this is our Christmas, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, and the purple shirt. Um, yeah. So my question is specifically for Nancy, but PJ, we love you too. Oh, thank you. <laughs> one, of the, one of the most accepted tropes of horror is that if you have sex or do drugs, you die. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Annie, Annie smoked a joint with Lori in the car. Do you have any animosity that Lori didn't die too? Or did she really inhale? <laughs> that is a question. <laughs> My father. <laughs> yeah. No. I don't have any animosity at all. Um, it would have been nice if I had lived, but then I'm not sure that I would have all, all the fans that I have. I had to live. <laughs> because people come to my table and say I, all the time, I, I was so mad when you died. I was so Aww. sad when you died, which is very sweet. You know? no, it, but it is true that, that there is this kind of, um, ingrained idea that that if if you are a young unattached woman or even if you are attached in some way and and, and you are outside the parameters of a of a virginal um, you know really up upright person that you know it's 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 just you're 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 either Madonna not, not the 1980s, <laughs> but you're you're this holier than thou person, or you're you're um, a sinner and, and <laughs> sinful, and, and there is this, this, to this, be this really strong streak of that running through. I mean, you can trace it back to silent films and all the way through literature in the Western canon. It's you know we're just part of that. Nobody even thinks about it. Just, yeah, that's the person who's going to die. Because they smoke pot. <laughs> now pot is legal in California. Is it legal in Texas yet? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so it'd be a whole different, maybe it'd be a whole different movie if we made it now and, and it was just fine to smoke pot and there wouldn't be like, oh, she's saying that. You know, that. I thought it was because you were in your underwear and that white shirt. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> there was anything to do with the pot. I thought you were bad and get some other good way to Well, it, it was just 
that anything that was out that was outside the parameters. Well, that was thrown away outside. Yeah, that's what appropriate. Right. Yeah. Anything at all. Why did Lori hang out with us? <laughs> <laughs> I always, Why did we hang out with her? Exactly. <laughs> oh, I know, because she had the house we could go to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that, and, and you and she was dating Jeff Yorkshire. You were babysitting. Right? You yeah, what were we doing in exchange? I don't know. Ruining her reputation. Or making her. I think I think it does well not to dive too deeply into That's true. <laughs> no, but like in high school, characters. In I high mean, school, my my best friend, and I went to two high schools, one in New Jersey and then one later in the International High School in Brussels. And Cindy Clark, she was from. Uh, you are in Illinois because we had a lot of different international people. And she smoked cigarettes, she had straight hair, she had a Belgian boyfriend, and I was straight A student, editor of the school paper, and I adored her. And, and yet she would have me, the reason she liked me was because I would spend the night at her house and we'd go up in her room. You'd do her homework for her. No, she would climb out the window and go hang out with the, whatever his name was. <laughs> and her mother would come by, you guys do your homework? Yeah. Yeah. You probably didn't have as deep a discussion even on set or even with John about the characters, right? No. There was no time for that. <laughs> I think that's what another thing, the casting was really good because he could see what he wanted and, and uh, he made his decisions fairly quickly. Yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah. Absolutely. Okay, uh, right back there. Sir. Hi, it's so good to talk to all again. I had a chance to speak with you all yesterday. And uh, I had a chance to briefly tell you all about how appreciative I was about the nostalgia of it all and what it meant to me growing up. And uh, so I have more of a curiosity than maybe a question. But, you know, it's easy to look at the fact that you guys had such a dynamic in that film, all of you all, that even though it was a slow burn, the truth is, is that it was like in a bottle. And it meant something special, even today, by today's standards, the film may be. The performances were great. My curiosity is, when you guys are at home and you're not in any kind of character whatsoever, you're not playing a part, you're not doing anything to a, to a camera, you're just being who you are. And when you're in those moments of just arbitrarily doing your everyday things, how does it feel to know that you guys are special and that all of us here appreciate you so much for how special you were? And the thing is, is that you have an opportunity just to think to yourself while you're sweeping or talking to someone on the phone, whatever it is, and it dawns on you, hey, I'm special, and I'm part of something that I'm special that I'm forever. Pretty sure we don't think that way. <laughs> no, but, but you are very sweet. You, I, feel very, I feel very special when, when I'm here, yeah. When I come here and I realize but well, this this movie is, is really a, a work of art, and and um, it, it, I'm blessed to be part of it. Absolutely. And Absolutely. and that's when I feel very special. Um, okay. Raising our kids. Yeah. They think we were special. Now, <laughs> <laughs> now they do. Yeah. Now. Yeah. 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 No, but but you know yeah. when I when I come here, it's it's really um, a truly. Rewarding experience. I'm just very grateful to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that was, that was really what are you most passionate about in your lives? These are teachers, though. I'm, I, yeah. I'm, So I'm very grateful to my students. I, I find it extremely nourishing and enlightening experience to, to be a teacher. Um, so if you've thought about teaching at all, I highly recommend you go explore it. But it, it, unless you're just really blessed, um, teaching evolves over time. Um, and 
And I like to make sculpture too. I, I, um, I like to play with material objects and mash them together and weave them together. And so I, I'm also I have one foot in the art in the art making world too. I'm more boring. <laughs> I'm a great cook. Yeah. I love being a mom. I loved acting when I did do it. Uh, I don't do it so much anymore just because, uh, I don't know, just the roles have to really be special. Um, but I love uh, being a mom and a grandmother. I've got four grandkids now, so I spend a lot of my time either in Virginia or California, and it's really the light of my life. And so. It, it's funny because my grandkids are like two, five, six, and eight, so not really knowing any of my movies. They could get to watch the trailer for Rock and High School. <laughs> and my son said, when can you see the whole movie? I said, when you're a little older than this is one step. Man in her underwear. <laughs> but, uh, um, I'm so excited to know that someday they will be watching these movies. And, uh, so that part of it's really cool. And uh, I'm just grateful again for all you fans, wherever we go, whatever conventions we go to, there's just so much love and respect. And, and it just goes right back to you guys because you're the reason that, that this is all possible. And I'm always overwhelmed and amazed and so excited that there's so many of you, and I really appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> we have a lot of wonderful high school players here. Yeah. 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 I'm table, and I'm so excited. Yes. I'd rather hear something. I want to thank you both for taking the time to interact with me. Oh, thank you. I also think you have a two-part two question for you. How was the set of Halloween different from the set of Rock and Roll High School? And what was it like to work with them? Um, okay, well, pretty similar in that the shooting schedule was exactly the same, 21 days. Um, we made Rock and Roll High School for $200,000. So. Uh, had the same DP, being funny. <laughs> so that was magical for the first day. He looked at me and said, what are you doing here? I said, what are you doing here? So that was great and I knew I would be in good hands because I love the way he um, and um, the atmosphere probably was similar because Alan Arkish, the director, was in many ways like John Carpenter, one of those, you know, boy wonders, love film from the beginning of, you know, childhood, and just wanted to make a really cool movie um, his way. And so those were the similarities, a very relaxed, nice vibe on the set. Same thing like Halloween probably with one or two, possibly three takes, because it was a time crunch, time element. Um, and in those days, filming on film, you weren't looking and seeing what you were getting, so there was always that little nervousness uh, uh, the next day once you know they saw the LEDs and was everything good and focused, you know, don't be tripped, everything was good. <laughs> So that, that element, I think, also added to make, them making doubly sure of what they were seeing yeah. and looking through the camera that it was going to come out, you know. But they wouldn't have to do it again and dread it, oh my god, the retake that would cost money and time. Um, so a lot of similarities. But um, the difference, of course, on Halloween, we didn't have their moms. <laughs> And they were great. They were very quiet. They're from New York. I had never heard of them before. So when I put on the cassette for the first time, I ran around the house screaming. Because <laughs> I had loved the Eagles and Jody Mitchell and Neil Young. And now suddenly I'm listening to them. <laughs> Captain Gavin, hey, Gavin, hey, Gavin, hey. <laughs> so very different. But I grew to love them and I love them now. And they were all very quiet and shy. People think it was like a party on the set. But no, they were nice people shot in a day. <laughs> mm -hmm. And the first day of shooting was the bedroom scene where Joey sings to me, I want you around. I was in her mom, so I was just Joey, okay, get in your underwear. <laughs> so it was very strange. But uh, for the most part, I had to drag them to lunch. I was like, come on, line up for lunch. Oh, we didn't do anything yet, you can eat. I go, no, you can eat, everybody eats at the same time. So uh, we did have to pull out a bunch of pages. They really weren't great at memorizing lines, but <laughs> what was captured on screen was just 
the essence of them. And uh, I love that movie. I, I love the part, I love the movie, and my heart is very respected this for Halloween because it's a very special movie that just has grown uh, over time and won the hearts and minds of all you guys and your families. And, uh, can't wait for my grandkids to watch it. <laughs> Hi, so I have another question for you, PJ. I wanted to know how did it compare playing a teenager in Halloween to playing a teenager in Carrie? Uh, playing a teenager in Halloween and playing a teenager in Carrie. Oh, Halloween, I was you know, all about Bob. <laughs> <laughs> in Carrie, I, was, I wanted to do Chris Harkinson's bidding, and I, was, I would do anything, and I was sort of a bad girl. <laughs> in a different way, because I was just falling over the year. <laughs> and, uh, you know, when you look at that movie from the bullying standpoint, obviously, it's, you know, in today's world, it's, it's a good lesson in what not to do, obviously. But back then, it was a Stephen King book, and we were just making the movie. But uh, I can't say it wasn't fun, because it's fun to be bad. <laughs> But only in the movies. <laughs> but it was, you know, that was my first movie, so it was very exciting. And I, I was only, my character is not in the Stephen King book, Norm is not in the book, but Brian De Palma put in one line because he wanted another character to go along with Nancy Allen's. And then I was really going on for one week, but after we saw the dailies and saw that we had a good chemistry, he said, okay, I'm going to put you in. Wherever Nancy is, you follow her, you do her bidding. You know? <laughs> so, and that set was great. And, and like Halloween and Rock and Hearts, we pretty much had to be there every day because you, you know, you wanted the camaraderie, you wanted the kids together, especially when you need the calm. You never knew when you're going to do this and if somebody's going to be in the background. So, you know, it's lucky for those films you've got to kind of see how films are made, you know, just starting out. So it was exciting from that point of view. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we have time for a couple more. Oh, let's go to space. All right. <laughs> uh, there you go. Uh, what did you think of Donald Pleasant's acting in Halloween? Uh, I think what did you think of Donald Pleasant's acting? Oh, he's one of my favorite actors. I, I was in awe of Donald Pleasant's showing up on the set. I was kind of dumbstruck. Um, because I, as a kid, I had. Um, watched him in several several films and I just thought he was amazing and then um, later on realized he's a stage actor too and so I I thought he you know he could you could do no wrong. Right. <laughs> yeah. I don't know that I had been aware of him really as an actor. I am not sure I hadn't watched it. The great you never saw the great escape. Yeah, yeah. But I saw that movie as a kid, and I was just like, oh man, that guy's so good. His eyes are just... Yes, he's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Do we have any aspiring actors, actresses in here? Yeah? I see that. Do you have any uh, great advice for, for people that want to pursue this? Because it's not easy, but it can be done. Oh, it's so different today. I don't know, but uh, easier... In one way, you don't have to drive to the studio and pick up the script and then go home and go <laughs> and try to do an audition live and make a phone and, you know, video it on your cell phone and send it in. But I guess the main thing is if you really, really want to pursue it, you just have to stick to it. Stick yeah. with it. That would be my only advice. Like, just keep doing it and doing everything you can that really is your passion. You know, it will happen because if it's truly in your heart, and that's what you want to do, but you just really have to be committed. And it probably isn't going to happen any way that you thought it would happen. No, that's true. <laughs> but it will happen, and you just have to go. And be unique. Be yourself. Because there's only one of you, and when you bring authenticity to any part, it makes it realistic and believable. And that's, to me, the secret of acting. You know, you can go... I do Shakespeare and do all kinds of things, you know, and do plays, and that's great too. But when you're on screen, there's something that takes over in that fifth dimension, <laughs> and it's got to capture the spirit of who you are. So I think that's really important to remain true to yourself. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs>
arts and crafts in the 70s. <laughs> and of course, everything has changed. But the fact that our movie could achieve that kind of milestone in terms of money was, I think, more to do maybe with the subject matter than and the way it was filmed than, you know, the, um, the content, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to think of our movie being a small little movie or an en engine that could put up against something like a Top Gun. And I think even when you think of the Academy Awards, it's never back then it would even been considered to be con considered for Academy Awards because it was that kind of movie and that sort of sub-area. But that all changed because it was such a good movie. People started to take, no, well, why is this little movie getting so, you know, getting so, so popular? Why are they paying money? Why is it making so much money? What is it about this movie? And again, it's the, the magic and the chemistry of all the elements together that made the whole. And I think it's just a beautiful testament to, again, even going back to, if you want to be an actor, you know, just if you put your heart into something, it, it, it could succeed. But yeah, there's so many, so many other movies like the, uh, what's that one where they are looking for ghosts and they think there's, is that ghost one? Yeah. Uh, you know, anyway. Uh, after, there's so many spin offs of different types of movies that maybe just didn't have all the elements that Halloween had, so they're not going to be a success. But today, I don't know, it'd be pretty hard to come up with an original kind of a movie, whether it's horror or anything, you know, so. So, so much has been explored, but I guess there's always room for something new. <laughs> yeah, and that hand that's been up the whole time. Yeah, yeah. really. I would like to play those three characters, Halloween, Carrie, and Rock and Roll. I would like playing those characters. Well, I love playing them. First of all, they were teenagers, so that was great because I was already in my 20s and I was 28 when I filmed Rock of High School, so that was my last teenage role. And like I said before, that was not me. None of those characters was me, but were me in high school. Um, I went to school in Europe, so it was a very different uh, attitude and didn't really have a lot of access to television or movies. A lot of literature, a lot of languages, but um, it was fun for me because wherever I moved in the world, I was born in Germany, I lived in Morocco, I grew up in Maracaibo, Venezuela, then I went to, to um, Brussels, Belgium, um, learned different languages, but wherever I went, there were always these kids that were from oil companies or embassy brats, and they were all very American, and I always admired them and thought, oh, it must be so nice to like, be an American kid. <laughs> so I had my chance with those three roles. So I was very excited. And I got to play them to the hilt with what I thought being an American teenager would be. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, we're going to wrap it up here. The last question, Casey. Uh, Nancy, you were also in Halloween 3 which the movie obviously was not received well at the time, but has grown a cult following. If it did receive well and continued as an anthology series, would you have both continued in the series? Oh, for sure. I, I, was, I was really quite enamored of that idea that there would be a different story about Halloween that had something to do with Halloween, that that would be the direction the franchise was going. Um, I guess it's Maybe I thought I would live and <laughs> <laughs> I, I just thought I could play a different character. Could play a different character. But that's not what was happening at the time. And um, so we didn't get to go down that path yet. But you know, you never know. You could circle back, right? You can always circle back. Um, and they used our pictures in the Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they you got to be the news story. Right. They're always references. But yeah, yeah, it was fun. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, we got to wrap up. But, uh, one little tradition that, that we uh, that we like to do is we have to do a, a selfie with the crowd. Now, without messing up everybody's seat assignments, if you guys want to just um, gather in, we'll uh, stand up and turn around and uh, get you guys in the back. How, how about Jamie Lee Curtis winning the Academy Award? Yeah. 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 Are you guys ready? Let's have a stand in. I'm <laughs>